Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the AGV K3 helmet. Okay, so the AGV K3 is back. AGV's original K3 was a cheap and cheerful race style helmet that cost just over 100 quid and was really popular, especially if it had a Valentino Rossi or a Guy Martin paint scheme on it. AGV then added the K3SV with SV standing for sun visor, which is something that first K3 didn't have. The SV was another really popular helmet and that led to the SVS, which had a better visor and a few small upgrades. So now, nine years later, we've got the straight K3 back in the range and this time it has a sun visor. I'd say this is more of a replacement really for the K3SV. It's a bit more grown up and the K3's old role of entry level racy lid is now really carried out by the K1S. Anyway, that's the history lesson over. Let's focus on this lid. I've worn this one now for a couple of hundred miles on the road on my own Yamaha FZ1 Phaser and also on a Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GT. So I can give you the technical lowdown and also let you know what I think of it out on the road. It's got a plastic shell and this size medium K3 weighs in on our scales at 1533 grams, which is actually pretty good for a plastic shelled lid like this. There's venting at the chin and up top. The chin vent opens with a small switch in the middle just here. And the idea is that the air flows in through the chin bar and exits in front of the nose so it can reach the inside of the visor. Now, being honest, I couldn't really tell the difference between open and closed when I was riding either of the bikes I used during my time with this lid. Both of those bikes have screens and it might be that this lid is better on a naked bike, but I did try several lids while riding those bikes and I could feel air flowing through the chin vents on quite a lot of those lids. So I think really air is getting past the screens and it's more an issue with the helmet. There are two switched vents up top too, just here, and I did have a couple of issues here as well. First is that they were fiddly to operate, especially when I was wearing winter gloves. And the second, as with the chin vent, I couldn't really notice a big difference between when they were open and when they were closed. So in my opinion anyway, ventilation is not really the strongest point of this helmet. Moving on to something that is a stronger point of this helmet, and that's the visor. It's a new fitment, the GT 6.1. It's got a new method of fitting, but it's still familiar if you're used to AGVs, and it's got five strong steps from fully open to fully closed. Then there's a small tab in the center of the chin bar that pushes the visor open to a cracked or city position to give you a bit of airflow. The main lifting duties go to a tab on the left-hand side, and the K3 comes with a pinlock anti-mist insert in the box, which is a pinlock 70, and that's the middle grade of insert in terms of fog protection. It's easy to adjust the tension of the pinlock pins if you need to, because you've got external screws to rotate those pins without having to press them out and push them back in again. AGV claim the visor gives 190 degrees of peripheral vision, and I can't argue with that claim, as I found the peripheral vision to be good while I was wearing this helmet. The main visor is backed up by a sun visor, which operates on a switch that runs along the bottom edge of the left of the helmet. It's got a reasonable amount of drop and it gives good levels of glare protection, but there's no anti-fog coating. So I found that that sun visor misted it up in damp conditions. Now, moving to the inside, the lining is nice and plush and I found it comfortable. There's no stitching in awkward spots and I couldn't feel any of the press studs while I was wearing the helmet. The chin curtain here isn't fitted to standard, but there's one in the box for you to fit if you do want to. I found the helmet much quieter and much less breezy with that fitted compared to having it removed. Now it is pretty full in size, so having this chin curtain in place made it a bit fiddlier to put the lid on and to take it off, especially without dislodging the mounting tabs for the curtain. Now before I move on to comms capability, the last but crucial piece of info about the inside, and that's the fastening strap. The SV runs a micrometric style buckle fastener and it's a stainless steel toothed slider that's got a classy feel to it. So let's move on to comms. There's no dedicated intercom for this helmet with AGV saying it suits generic communication systems. Now that is kind of true, but I found there were a couple of issues. Firstly, the trim at the base of the helmet is a little bit fat to get a clamp mount around it. So you'll probably have to use a self-adhesive pad to stick it to the shell of the helmet. I did that with a Senna 20S Evo intercom and that sticks out a little bit below the base just here, which then made it a bit trickier to operate the sun visor switch. So I think this helmet would be best with a sleeker intercom that doesn't extend below the bottom edge of the lid. The recesses inside the lid for speakers are also pre-filled with padded boosters, which you normally get supplied with the intercom. So the boosters, the idea is that they bring the speakers closer to your ears, but for some people they become too close and then it becomes a bit uncomfortable, which is exactly what happened for me. So if you're a bit like that, 
then you'll need to carefully unstick those booster pads from the helmet to give you a bit more room around the ears. Okay, so let's move on to nuts and bolts like sizing, approvals and prices. The AGV comes in sizes from extra small up to double extra large and there are three shell sizes. The smallest shell covers lid sizes up to and including medium, large gets a shell all to itself and then the biggest shell is for lid sizes XL and above. AGV have also done away with their quirky MS and ML sizes, so now instead of two types of medium, now there's just one. I wore an ML in the old K3 SV and that was a little bit loose. I wore a medium for this review as I do in virtually every helmet and the fit this time was ideal so that move has worked well at least for me. For approvals the K3 meets the new ECE 2206 standard for the road. All new helmet models released from 2023 onwards have to be approved to that standard and it does give a little bit more confidence in the protection levels that a helmet offers. The first batch of K3s to land with us don't have ACU gold stickers for use on UK racetracks but we're told the approval process is underway and that the K3 will soon have that sticker in place. It's way too early at the moment for a rating under the UK government's sharp impact testing scheme but if and when one of those ratings is released we'll add that info to the description below. Right, prices. The K3 has launched with an RRP of £199.99 in plain white, it's £209.99 in other plain colours, it's $249.99 for graphics, and if you want a race replica design, then that's $269.99. Okay, so let's wrap up. I did have some issues with this helmet. The vents didn't flow a lot of air for me, the sun visor would mist in damp weather, and I didn't find the intercom accommodation to be ideal. Overall though, I still found it a pretty good helmet. The peripheral vision it offers is very good, the lining's very plush, and I got a good seal against wind once I'd fitted that chin curtain. If you ride in good weather, if you're not the sort of person who faffs around with vents a lot and you don't use complicated comms or don't use comms at all, then this is actually a good helmet and I found it a good step on from the old K3 SB. But if you ride in all weathers, if you like a lot of airflow and you want high-end comms, then my honest view is that other helmets may well do a better job for you. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the AGV K3 helmet, but if there is anything you'd like to ask, or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.